The college trap. There's a few layers to the college trap. So we talked about the student loan. I'm tired of hearing the student loan stories. Golly, dang. I'm tired of hearing the, oh, my debt, oh, my deferments ain't up. I'm tired. I'm tired of seeing college students with MBAs and PhDs and XYZs talk about their dead end job, working part time at Macy's, trying to figure it out. It's not that education is bad, it's not that college is bad. It's that you should not buy into that. College itself is going to be the end all be all. It's just an educational institute, it promises you nothing but education. No different than the J. Morrison Academy. I don't promise you get rich quick overnight. I don't promise you get rich quick, period. I promise you a thorough education on wealth creation. Now, Kenny had a, a great, I forgot how he said it, but what we say is action beats ambition. See, if you look up the definition for ambition, ambition means to have a strong desire. That means, ooh, I want it really, really bad. I want to build me some wealth. I want to be rich. I want to be a millionaire. And you might really mean that. You might really mean it. But do your actions match what you say you want and what you really, really mean? There has to be effort applied to what you are emphatic about. So we talk about the student loan part. Another part of the college trap, right? So it's this ideology in college. The student loans is just one kind of function that gets the government rich, the colleges rich. Come on, you. Colleges make money off your tuition. So the colleges partner with the government to say, hey, look, look, we'll all market and promote to them and get everybody from a young age and put pressure on the parents to pressure their kids to go to college. Because this is the highlight of America. So that way, they got to get the government student loans, and y'all make y'all 3 to 5% interest off the loans, but then we get our tuition money and we all win. Corporations win. When the reality is, again, there's many beneficial things in college for certain careers. But if the college education you're getting does not match the end goal for the career you want, what the hell are you in college for? You're getting the wrong kind of education. Why would you go to culinary school to learn how to cook when you want to be a barber? Why would you go to college just because when you know you want to be an entrepreneur? Or you want to be a real estate investor? Then get that education and that training. All I'm saying is let's be informed and educated and astute and savvy and mature about the decisions we make. Let's stop letting people puppeteer us and pimp us out. Let's know why we're doing what we're doing and that it's sensible, it makes sense, it's strategic. And this is how we break, break and beat the trap. Another play in college, the student athletes. Sad. So you're telling me, again, play ball, get a full scholarship. So my scholarship is equal to 30, 40,000 a year. So over six years, 160,000. But here I am, a star athlete or a regular athlete. But my presence is making the school tens of millions of dollars a year, but they're giving me pennies on the dollar. No equity. Don't even own your brand. You can't even sell your own jersey. Your last name on the back of the jersey, but they get all the profits. Not even a low profit share. So they're 18 years old, old enough to go to war for this country and die, old enough to get arrested and face 20 years in prison, or life in prison, but not all that the profit off their own talents, ingenuity, and gifts. That's the college trap. That is run by who? Corporations. That promote this grand opportunity. We're, see, it's all positioning. While learning business, it's all positioning. One of the biggest words in business is called opportunity. So Kenny's negotiating with Puff. Is Puff giving Kenny an opportunity, or is Kenny giving Puff an opportunity? It's all perspective. Are the college giving these kids opportunity, or all these kids giving the colleges opportunity? Who needs who more? To my college athletes, it's very simple. 
All you got to do is try some shit. All y'all not work. Y'all not go to camp. Y'all say, look, we need 50% of everything made on these college floors. Watch how fast that negotiation go. Try that. There is no NCAA basketball, football, lacrosse, soccer without the NCAA player, without the student athlete. The athlete don't need the college. The college needs the athlete. But if you are not strategic, mature, or disciplined, or organized enough to execute such a strategy, you will continue to get pimped out. People will only do to you what you let them do to you. In the NFL, same thing. NFL players, same thing. People will only do to you what you let them do to you. That's the whole jits and secret to corporate America. That's what they do. But they market and they promote and they advertise and they position and posture really, really well to make you think you somehow are doing, they're somehow doing you a favor. When you go get the Gucci family richer and the Louis family richer and the Hermes family richer, or the BMW family richer, or the Benz family richer. That's all you're doing. Every product you buy goes through a corporation, and the shareholders or owners of that corporation get richer and richer as you fill their pockets. But they make it seem like you're doing them a favor by buying and wearing their label. And pop culture supports that. So there's no reason for our student athletes or students in general to be caught in these particular traps. Here's the other college trap. There's no emphasis from high school to college in society or culture on ownership. Why in high school you learn how to dissect a frog in high school if you don't learn how to own your own home? My contention is that they intentionally leave out financial education from our schools so that the working class, the middle class, what's called the lower middle class, stays disenfranchised, stays poor and poor, so that they stay, so they stay, so they stay richer and richer. 